Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! European Union leaders have given a cool response to Theresa May's proposal to guarantee the rights of EU citizens living in the UK. The President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, called the plans below expectations and says they risk making the situation for EU citizens worse. Under the plan, which the Prime Minister describes as serious and fair, people from EU countries who've lived here for five years would receive similar rights to British citizens. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, reports from Brussels. Goodbye to the flag, goodbye to this town. A year ago today, Britain decided this place would be written out of our future. But what the picture outside will look like for millions who've made their lives around the continent is now starting to become clear. We've set out what I believe is a serious offer, a fair offer, that will give the reassurance to EU citizens living in the UK. One to one attempts to sell her plans that citizens who've lived in the UK for five years can remain for good. And until we leave the Union, others could come. But her EU rivals have plenty of questions. What about Spaniards now in the UK with family abroad or anyone else? Is the cut-off date when the Brexit process started or the moment when we actually leave? Not till Monday will ministers at home be ready to give those answers. Are you getting a clearer idea of the kind of Brexit that the UK government wants? No. It's vague. We want to be sure the rights of citizens are protected. That's important for us. There are a lot of other citizens who are not covered with uh, Mrs May's proposal. She might not have gone far enough here, but for many at home, is Theresa May's plan tough enough? It gives those three million EU citizens in the UK certainty about the future of their lives. And we want the same certainty for the more than one million UK citizens who are living in the European Union. You've always said voters gave politicians a clear instruction to control immigration. But under your plans, for nearly another two years, as many Europeans as they like can still come to live in the UK. For many voters, do you think that will really sound like taking back control? What voters voted for when they voted to leave the European Union was to ensure that outside the European Union, the United Kingdom could establish our own rules on migration, on movement of people from the EU into the UK. Away from home, there's relief that at last the UK is putting things on the table. But for Europe's new power couple, it's a good beginning, but not a breakthrough. We've understood the UK doesn't want to give EU citizens full rights. They, just as they left together, will decide together with the rest of the EU how they feel about that. My first impression is that the UK's offer is below our expectations and that it risks worsening the situation of citizens. Reservations shared by the opposition, who in contrast, their leader, is loving his time in the sun. We should not be negotiating about this. What we should be doing is unilaterally saying, as Labour has said from day one after the referendum, that all EU nationals should be given permanent residence rights. Concerns over these proposals reflect Theresa May's three-way bind, a united opposing front here in Brussels, clashing expectations among the public at home, and at her back inside her own party, different strands of thinking and demands and even a leader at the peak of their powers would struggle to deal with all that. Prime Minister, did your proposals go far enough? Relieved, perhaps, to be leaving, but relieved, perhaps, too, to have been away from hostility at home. But governing is doing, not just fending off enemies. Theresa May, at least today, has been doing that. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Brussels. Well, since the historic referendum vote exactly a year ago today, David Cameron resigned, Theresa May became Prime Minister, Article 50 was triggered and the Conservatives lost their majority after calling a snap election. So, pretty quiet really. John Kay has been to one community in Bristol to ask EU citizens, citizens in the UK how they feel about the Brexit vote. 12 months on. BBC Radio Bristol.
Good morning. Exactly one year after the EU referendum, Theresa May is in Brussels. Southmead. People here voted like the UK as a whole. 52% for Brexit, 48% against. But a year on, confusion. It would be nice for the politicians to say, this is it, black and white, this is where we're going. But they're not doing that. The UK is coming out of the European Union, but um, in what kind of terms? What do you understand by Brexit? I haven't got a clue. For some, it's been an anxious year. At the Polish deli, customers have been waiting to hear if they'll have to leave Britain. When I found out, obviously, about the Brexit and stuff, I was devastated, to be honest with you. Monica came here from Poland ten years ago, so under Theresa May's plan, she would be able to stay. But she told me people who've arrived more recently will still have concerns. They're all scared, like, they don't know what's going to happen. So that's, that's all I can tell. I don't really know what, like, because obviously they're worried that they're going to be kicked out. It's got to be tighter legislation. It's got to be tighter than that. Down the road in the cafe, some are already frustrated with the Brexit negotiations. It's all bravado, isn't it? Around the bush and up the lane. Maggie assumed it would all be sorted by now. I reckon we'll pull out as soon as possible. But how quickly do you think it can happen? Tomorrow be nice. <laughs> Charity begins at home. Look after our people, our homeless, our hospitals, our schools and everything else like that. But as he reads today's headlines, Ron feels the whole thing could be slipping away. It's going to take months and months and months and months. And what sort of deal do you think we'll get? <clears throat> if we get a deal. For decades, many round here have worked in the aerospace industry. But a year after the referendum, some worry about the impact on jobs. Like Neville, who's out of work. He voted Remain. And he reckons Brexit is already hitting his pocket. Butter and that has gone up like 30p. Milk's gone up like 20p. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of money over if you're spending like £100 every week. So a year after the vote, they are still just as split here in Southmead. What many thought was a simple choice 12 months ago now seems more complicated and the road ahead more uncertain. John Kay, BBC News, Bristol. Let's assess the negotiations of the day. Mark Urban's been following events just back from Brussels. And what is your sense of reaction today, Mark? Well, I, mean, I think there has been an element of, oh, thank God we're, we're now moving on this. Mm. You know, that the offer from Theresa May on citizens' rights was tabled last night just before this anniversary day and at least started to colour in what Britain means by Brexit. But overall, it's not been a very positive reaction, uh, summed up by the person who represents the 27 governments, well, the 28, in fact, but in this case, the 27, uh, EU President Donald Tusk. My first impression is that the UK's offer is below our expectations and that it risks worsening the situation of citizens. But it will be for our negotiating team to analyse the offer line by line once we receive it on paper. As a matter of fact, Brexit took up very little time as at, at this European Council. We devoted most of our work to addressing people's concerns over security, illegal migration and uncontrolled globalisation. Well, there you have it. Um, him saying, well, it, it doesn't look like it'll preserve the rights they have now. And you might say, well, you wouldn't expect that if we're leaving the EU for everything to be exactly the mm. same. But look, it's the beginning of a negotiation. And of course, he's saying, actually, we spent most of our time talking about other stuff. We get it. It's game on. It, does it tell you anything about the way negotiations are going in general? Well, I think what it does tell you is that these two key issues where the EU27 are absolutely united and feel very strongly, citizens' rights and the budget, where they're disturbed, determined to see substantial progress, uh, are going to be a, a tough initial uh, negotiation. Now, some people in Downing Street are suggesting that there might be sufficient progress, to use the term that's mm. been coined, on those two key core issues by October to start addressing the, the, the bigger package, the future relationship, I think that's incredibly optimistic. I mean, we can see from the way they're now saying, let's pull apart this offer on citizens' rights line by line. It's bound to happen in a negotiation of this kind. The budget negotiation is going to be difficult. And all of that stuff is going to take time, many months, I think. 
it's going to be a difficult process, a technical process, hard even sometimes to follow what each tiny twist and turn of negotiations logic uh, will tell us. I'm glad you said that, Mark. Thanks very much. Now, below our expectations, particularly vague, not a breakthrough. Yes, it's fair to say there was a less than ecstatic response from the other European leaders to Theresa May's promise that three million EU citizens will be able to stay in the UK after Brexit. At the end of her first EU summit since she failed to secure a majority, Mrs May admitted there were differences to be resolved. From Brussels, our political editor Gary Gibbon reports. Back in the room after being asked to leave for some of last night's discussion, Theresa May has a new mantra. Her offer to EU citizens is fair and serious. EU leaders aren't convinced. My first impression is that the UK's offer is below our expectations and that it risks worsening the situation of citizens. It sounds like some EU leaders were deeply suspicious of Theresa May's approach to this, broadcasting her gloss on the deal on offer to EU citizens, but not giving them any documentation or detail in the room last night, saving that for when she's safely back home. But one thing they said she could count on not getting, and that's a cut-off date for EU citizens in the UK that's any earlier than the date of Brexit, March 2019. Sources say the UK government knows it'll have to move on that. German officials said there were many questions left begging. The Dutch Prime Minister thought thousands of them. And then there's the mighty question mark that hovers over Theresa May herself. Hear this nervous laughter from the Finnish Prime Minister this morning. Did you offer some commiserations on the election result <laughs> over dinner? <laughs> no. <laughs> The leaders didn't ask her direct, but boy, did the delegations talk about it amongst themselves. How much longer does Theresa May have? Is she now the prisoner of the right of her party, the faction that seems keenest on keeping her in power? Did Britain's general election results signal some kind of counter-revolution? And could British policy on Brexit move a lot further from Theresa May's original plans outlined in January? Are you getting a clear idea of the kind of Brexit that the UK government wants? No. European Commission President was also asked what he thought of Theresa May's offer for EU citizens. Theresa May has stepped in the right direction. That's a first step, but this step is not sufficient. There was palpable excitement at the end of summit press conference. But not this one, the one in the next door room. The EU equivalent of a rock star wedding. As the flashbulbs erupted, one room down, Theresa May was asked about criticism from EU leaders of her plan for EU citizens. There are some differences between that and the proposal the European Commission put out, and the matter will now go into the negotiations. She dismissed a claim from George Osborne that she'd single-handedly vetoed David Cameron's attempt to give EU citizens the right to stay one year ago. Well, that's certainly, on that last point, that's certainly not my recollection. I've been very clear all along that the issue of citizens' rights should be at an early, addressed at an early stage of the negotiations. While we've been here uh, during this summit, we've heard some EU leaders uh, speak about maybe Britain staying in the European Union or having a much closer relationship with the European Union than was envisaged in your Lancaster House speech. Are they deluded, or is it possible they've read the result of the general election better than you have? If you look at what happened in the election, over 80% of people voted for parties that were committed to uh, respecting the vote that took place a year ago in the referendum, uh, that the United Kingdom will leave the European Union. And I have always been very clear that the United Kingdom will be leaving the EU, we will not be leaving Europe. We want a deep and special partnership to continue with the European Union. They want to project a European Union daring to dream its worst times are behind it. And it's Britain that will repent at its leisure, or maybe even rethink its attitude to Europe. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Brussels. So what do EU citizens living in this country think about their future after Brexit? Will they feel welcome? How secure do they feel? Our political correspondent, Michael Crick, has been finding out. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. Many celebrated when Britain voted narrowly for Brexit a year ago today, but many of the three million people here from other EU states worried about their future. 
Today, we dropped in on a Polish community centre in West London, which just three days after the referendum was notoriously daubed with offensive graffiti. For some enjoying lunch in the centre cafe, it's been an anxious year. What's the last year been like for you? Oops, I don't know. Um, I think, to be honest, uh, that was probably the first time since I felt like a foreigner in this country, so it wasn't great. And now Theresa May has said that um, people who've been here uh, more than five years will be allowed to stay. What do you think of that? Well, I think that's fair. You should be able to stay. You should not change your whole life around politicians' decision, you know? This builder, who depends on fellow Poles for his business, welcomes the PM's statement. Already it's very difficult to, to, to get uh, good people with skills to work. And if we don't have fresh blood, it will be almost impossible for, for us to, to keep the quality and carry on as a company. This is our home, yeah, she was born in here. Olga, on maternity leave, is glad EU citizens here will be able to stay, but wants a crackdown on them getting benefits. I do find it frustrate, frustrating when people come to this country and being after a few months they, you know, they, they get benefits. Do you think that happens? Do you, do you think Polish people do that? Polish people do that the same, yeah. Do you know them? Yeah. Really? Unfortunately, yeah. Really? And it's quite upsetting. And the Poles could be key allies to Britain, the Prime Minister suggested today in Brussels. Further along the street, an Italian restaurant, whose chef, Sergi, is Spanish. No, all my friends are, have the same situation like me, where they, they came here with all the doors open, and now they, are clo they seem that they are closing for everyone, you know? So people that before they didn't have to even think about, about leaving now they may start thinking okay what i'm gonna do in two years time when this finish you know i'm gonna be able to stay what about my family what about my friends what about my jobs prospects is anything gonna change so yeah everyone is quite worried about you know? and the manager alfredo isn't impressed by what theresa may says at this stage when the negotiations start then i start to make up my mind at the moment i don't even you know I don't care what she say at the moment, as I say, because she can change her mind tomorrow if the European community upset her for some reason, you know. Alfredo wants the citizenship issue resolved quickly, since a good restaurant, he says, needs skilled staff, and he doesn't get many applications from British people. Michael Crick reporting there.